Hi, that's a short explanation about the Lempel-Ziff Welch or LCW algorithm, which is a lossless data compression method that's used, for instance, in GIF images or animations. Data compression is very important today. For instance, in communication, we can save a lot of bandwidth by compressing the data before you send it from one place to the other. And also in data storage, you can save a lot of disk space by compressing the data that you have. I will explain the LZW algorithm, the example of image data compression, and the particular task we look at. We have an image like this, which is some sort of two-dimensional matrix of pixels. And to apply the LZW algorithm, the first thing we do is we look at the image line by line, and then we reshape it and bring it in such a one-dimensional form. So here you have the first line and so on. And the second thing we do is we assign a unique number to every color. So zero represents red, one represents white, so on and so we essentially translate this string of pixels now into a string of numbers so that's the string we will look at in the following and that we will compress by applying the lzw algorithm to it before we have a look at the actual lzw algorithm i'll give you a bit of an intuition of how compression by finding repeating patterns works so that's the string we have seen in the previous slide and in this sequence of numbers you see some repeating patterns for instance zero and one in a row appears here but it also appears later and these three numbers in a row we also see the same sequence again and if you have repeating sequences then you can save a lot of space by doing something called encoding so you represent these repeating sequences by code so zero and one in a row is now represented by code number three and these three numbers in a row is represented by code number four and if you do that encoding the compressed version of that string looks like this so that's not the LZW algorithm that I'll explain on the next slide. So before we talk about the algorithm, we need a data structure. So essentially it's three variables that we need. Uh, the first variable that's our image data. So that's the sequence of numbers that we want to compress. And the second variable that's uh, the compressed version of the data where each number is essentially a code that represents a sequence in the image data. And the third variable that we need, that's a dictionary. And the dictionary is um, a lookup table, which is essentially a mapping always from a sequence of numbers in the image data. So like that sequence here to a code, so to an LZW code that represents the sequence. So that's the data structure. The algorithm then works as follows. We scan the image data from left to right, and we always try to find the longest sequence that we still have in our dictionary and then add the corresponding LZW code to the compressed data. So we look here for a sequence, we always check is it still in the dictionary, and the longest sequence that is still in the dictionary, there we add the corresponding code here to the compressed string. And once we have done that, we will add a new entry to the dictionary that is essentially the sequence that we have just added plus the next pixel will create a new code for for that sequence essentially and it will add it to the dictionary so that's the algorithm it's maybe a bit abstract so that's why I'll, I'll give an example on the next slide so let's try to encode this sequence of numbers in the beginning we'll start with an empty string for the compressed data and a dictionary that is kind of a trivial mapping from a single number sequence to the corresponding number we start on the left and we ask the question this simple sequence of single number is that in our dictionary of course it is so that means we can look for the next longer sequence ask the question zero and one in a row is that in our dictionary now the answer is no so that means we have to add this sequence to the dictionary and we add the last sequence that still was in our dictionary or the code representing it so that's just the zero from before that we have to add to the compressed string so the next step the compressed string will look like this we have here a new entry in our dictionary and then we go on with the next number that we haven't encoded yet it's a single number so that's of course in the dictionary so we look for the next longer sequence one and zero in a row that's not yet in our dictionary, so that means we have to add it. And again, the last sequence that was still in the dictionary or the code representing it, that will be added to the compressed string. So the next step, the compressed string has one entry more. The dictionary also has a new entry. And we go on here 
with the next number that we haven't encoded yet. That's of course in the dictionary, so we look for the next longer sequence. And that's not the first time that we see a sequence that is already in the dictionary. So we can look here, uh -huh. we see the sequence 0 and 1 that is represented by code number 3, essentially because we have seen it before, the sequence 0 and 1 we appeared here before in the image data. So that means we can go on to the next longer sequence, ask the question, is that in the dictionary? Now the answer is no, so that means we have to add it. But important is now, instead of adding this sequence, which was still in the dictionary, this one here, instead of adding this to the compressed string, we can now add just the code that represents the sequence. Um, just this code can be added to the compressed data. So in the next step, the compressed data looks like this. We have here um, three added. And uh, if you compare it now to the image data, the important thing is you see here, these four numbers are now encoded by these three numbers. So you can see already that we have saved a bit of space. And if you go on with this encoding procedure and, and uh, do, do it for this longer sequence, you'll find more and more repeating patterns and the compression ratio. So the ratio between these two numbers will become better and better. So that's an example. On the next slide, I would like to briefly show you some pseudocode and some sort of, yeah, with some sort of Python style. Um, feel free to stop the video here and have a look at it. I would like to just mention two properties of the LZW algorithm here. One is that it's quite efficient, uh, that applies to encoding and decoding, so there's an order of n time efficiency, and you can actually see this here already, because when you look, um, you have just one for loop that loops over your whole image, so no nested for loops or so, so that means you are order of n time efficient where n is the size of the image. And the second thing is the implementation of the algorithm is quite easy, so the actual Python implementation is not much longer than this this pseudocode. Okay, so as an outlook, um, I would like to mention again LZW, that's a compression algorithm that's used a lot, uh, for instance, in GIF images and animations, where it really forms the core part of that format. For real GIFs, you have then some additional things you need, like image and frame headers, where you store color tables, delays between frames, and so on. There's some procedure to pack LZW codes into, into actual bytes. So if you're interested in all these details, have a look uh, at the official documentation of the GIF format. Um, and if you want to see an, an implementation of an encoder, then maybe have a look at this repository.